I'm bringing it back because, oh boy, I'm gonna need it. In fact, you know what? Here's to Microsoft for taking home the early victory in their E3 conference. Maybe not really. I mean, we haven't seen Nintendos yet, and that's probably going to win my heart, but Microsoft crushed it this year. I really liked what they did last year, too, and I fully expected this year to be just as great, and honestly... It was. I was very impressed. It was a very solid conference. It lasted an almost full two hours, and I would say it was 90% games and like 10% talking, and the actual talking we did get was pretty interesting. Mostly because it was Phil Spencer talking, and I really like Phil Spencer, but on top of that, almost everything he said had something to do with crossplay or gamers coming together on all platforms, and, and going into this conference, there was a tweet that showed Xbox said, if you want to stay up to date, on all the Xbox news throughout E3, make sure to tune in to Nintendo's event on Tuesday? Why would Xbox tell us to watch Nintendo's event? After the event started and we immediately got four games thrown at our faces, which I'll talk about in just a second, Philly Boy himself came out and told us that we'd, we'd be taking a closer look at Project X Cloud in this conference, as well as 14 games from their Xbox Game Studios. You remember when they pulled out their wallet filled with fat stacks of cash and bought out a ton of gaming studios to make games for them? Well, well now we're finally starting to see the fruits of that labor. And on top of that, we were just going to see 60 games overall. And I said this going into the event, Microsoft's event is exciting whether or not you like Xbox, whether or not you are a Microsoft fan, because they host a lot of the third party games. And this year we had the added benefit of having all of these Xbox exclusive games, although I will say, as I predicted, both in my E3 predictions video and right before my stream started, I had a feeling they were all going to pretty much be cinematic trailers. That's always the way it goes, right? You get told about the game being made, it's title card, whatever, then you get the cinematic trailer, then you get the gameplay trailer, maybe a release date, but chances are you get the release date in the next trailer they make. And since Xbox had just bought those 14 studios last year, I didn't expect them to come out the gate swinging with a ton of gameplay trailers because this year was the cinematic trailer year. That doesn't mean that there wasn't a ton of really cool things that happened, including Keanu Reeves, which I completely lost my mind over. Oh, are you kidding me? What? What? Xbox just won E3. Smash that like button, something I don't say that often, on top of hit the notification button because the next three or four days is gonna be insane and I don't want you to miss anything. Let's get started. I loved this. I actually, I'm a huge Xbox fan. I will say that if you're new around here. I am obviously a Nintendo guy. I'm all about the Switch right now, but I love all the systems and I do really, really, really love my Xbox. So those four games we got to look at before the event even started. The first one was Outer Worlds, which is the team that made Fallout New Vegas. It's their new game. It's their new baby. And essentially this game to me is kind of just a big old slap in the face to Bethesda. It's that that team that made what is regarded as the best Fallout game to a lot of people, that team has just gone out and made the best looking Fallout game I've seen, and it's called The Outer World. This just looks like a breath of fresh air into the Fallout series, which is what I wanted from Fallout 76, so I am ready for this. A lot of Bandai Namco's games got leaked the other day, and one of those that we saw screenshots for in that leak was Bleeding Edge. It's a game by Ninja Theory, a developer who's made, oh, just a ton of my favorite games. And it's a very Borderlands-looking Overwatch-style game. Now, for a game that's been in development for as long as this game has been, like, it was in development way before Xbox bought out Ninja Theory to make games for them, so this game is just, by happenstance, going to be an Xbox exclusive now as part of that deal. For a game that has been in development this long, I really wanted to see more of it, like, actual gameplay of it, because there are so many games of this style now, not just Overwatch, watch games, but games that are trying to recreate that Fortnite buzz. Honestly, if it wasn't Ninja Theory, I wouldn't have my eyes on this as much as I do, but if I wasn't a fan, based on what I just saw, I wouldn't be all that hyped for it. Then there was a look at Ori, Will of Wisps. I really enjoyed the first Ori game, and a lot of people consider it the best Xbox One exclusive. Also, the little guy looks a lot like my cat, so 
I can't help but love him. <laughs> and then it looks like Minecraft and Diablo have had some kind of weird baby, and for the first time, I think I'm actually somewhat excited to play a Minecraft game. It just looked fun. And then Phil came out and blabbed a bunch about crossplay and gaming and all of that stuff, and I will say that I, I enjoyed everything that he said this year. Crossplay and coming together focus, it was just really interesting to me, because it's just a, a weird time, not only just in console gaming, but just a weird time for Xbox, and it's intriguing to me. And it was interrupted by another look at Cyberpunk 2077. If you know me, you'll know I've been following this game way before I think I even had a YouTube channel when that initial trailer launched at E3, whatever year it was, six-ish years ago. But this new look at the game, I think it actually started in the same street, in the same sort of alleyway that we were treated to in that first teaser trailer, which was pretty cool. We didn't get any new gameplay, just some more of the story, I guess. I'm really confused by what's happening, but it was a really great cinematic trailer. And again, while there wasn't any gameplay, we still got, for me, the biggest and most exciting shock surprise of the entire event, and I doubt anything else this weekend is going to be able to top this moment for me. Keanu freaking Reeves, man. Talk about, talk about keeping a secret secret. Like, I, I knew as soon as that character walked in the frame that it was going to be someone that we would recognize. It was going to pan up and be some person, and I thought it was going to be one of those, oh, that's cool kind of moments, but I am a huge Keanu fan. There was no one else that would have made me lose my mind as much as that man. And then he came out on stage, and he's just so, oh man, is it weird for me as another grown man to say adorable? Because he is. <laughs> he was like reading the lines given to him about the game, and it makes you feel for anyone else that has to stand out there and read those lines, because if even Keanu Reeves made that seem kind of awkward and dorky the way that he was reading it, then no one else has any hope of making anything not sound cringe on that stage. But because it was Keanu, it was, it was, it would have been cringe, but it wasn't. It just, it was Keanu, and I can't help but love him. It's probably my favorite moment of E3's ever in existence at this point. Oh, and we got a release date, April of next year. You know, I was just accepting the fact this game was never going to come out, or at least not for a very long time. Be it GameStop buying that game and what feels like a week from now, so I'm just so excited. We got another glimpse at Star Wars that let us know a little bit more about the story, and it just reminds me of all the old Star Wars games I really loved. Throwing my lightsaber and Force bringing it back to me, slashing up people. That fight with that guy with the dual wielding purple light stick thing reminded me of like a not so intense Sekiro kind of stuff style of fight and I'm just so ready. There was a very creepy game that reminded me of the Blair Witch Project and then turned out it actually is the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> then they blasted through a ton of indie games, Nintendo Direct Nindy style, and there was a lot in there that not only have I played, but also looked really interesting. I won't go through all of them, but if you know me, again, I love indie games. And within this montage, there was a look at the new Battletoads game, and I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but oh boy. Doesn't look great. <laughs> then they talked a bunch about Game Pass, because why wouldn't they? Game Pass is an amazing service, and if you have an Xbox, or even now if you have a PC, you should really have Game Pass. I think for what they provide, for the cost that it is, it is so, so worth it. And they added a ton of new games to it, the biggest one was Metro Exodus, and now they just decided to make it even cheaper with Game Pass Ultimate. If you're already paying for Xbox Gold Live to play online or whatever, and Game Pass, you know, one's 10, the other's 10, they just threw them together in an ultimate pack and now it's 15. They literally just announced they were saving me $5 a month and adding more things to it. Like, I don't know guys, I mean Xbox, Microsoft, they're really hitting some home runs right now in my opinion. They bought out another studio, Double Fine, which I think is a great purchase for them. I love Double Fine, I talked about them a bunch on this channel. They also made Psychonauts and now they're making a sequel and we got another look at that given to us straight from Tim Schafer himself and Tim Schafer is a gaming rock and roll legend. Then we had a look at the new Lego Star Wars game, which is all nine movies in one, and a look at a new Dragon Ball game, which looks like it's all of Kakarot's story in an action RPG style game. That again was a lot of cinematics, a little bit of gameplay spliced in here and there, and for me, it looked like 
most of those Dragon Ball 3D open world feeling fighting games. We got to look at a very creepy feeling game called 12 Minutes. You play from a top down isometric style and it's like it seems to be in a loop. Very story driven. I couldn't really tell how the gameplay worked, but it definitely creeped me out. As far as Xbox exclusives go, Gears of War is, is mine. I adore Gears of War. So long story short, I am very excited for Gears of War 5. The initial trailer we saw with Kate freaking the heck out. I thought that was beautiful. It actually told us a lot about the game just with the expressions of all these characters freaking out. And if you played the last game, you can pretty much tell what is happening in this trailer, even though it's very subtle and doesn't say anything. However, as much as I did love that, um, where's the gameplay? Please. <laughs> the game is ready September 10th. I would have liked a look at more of the game at this point, considering everything else just got cinematic trailers. Kind of need gameplay of something, and Gears of War would have been a good one to do that. Missed opportunity in my opinion. There was another cinematic trailer for Gears of War after that and they did announce a bunch of beta testing in July for the online as well as Horde mode. Xavier Woods and AJ Styles was randomly there. They didn't say anything though. I'm guessing they have something else they're doing maybe after the event. But it was kind of weird just to see them sat there at an Xbox not doing anything. Like literally the screen wasn't doing anything but whatever. <laughs> Apparently they're making a new Elite controller. Initially when that popped up on the screen I was like why guys? Is why do you keep making these pointless hardware revisions of things that aren't gonna sell? This is a hundred and something dollar controller. You already have one. Like, what can you add to a controller to make it worth going out and buying another version of a controller that... Like, if, if you want an Elite controller, you probably already have one. It probably costs you over a hundred bucks. Why the heck would you want to go out and buy a sequel to that controller for the same console? But then as they broke down that you could tighten the retention on the toggle sticks, as well as setting the triggers to have different levels of depth to them for the different games that you're playing. And then that you could save all of that on like three sets of profiles and then seamlessly switch between all of them. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> I get That's actually a really cool looking controller. Yeah, I, I, I think I am might get one and I already have an elite so <laughs> dying light 2 looks a lot better than the first one I'm gonna rush through a couple of these this one's interesting it looks like they've literally just made a brand new Lego game in the Forza universe and they're just slapping it into Forza 4 Horizon. It looks great, like completely designed a brand new Lego world with a bunch of Lego cars. I don't understand why they're making a game about the Gears pop figures on, I mean, other than the fact that it's on mobile, which of course everyone wants to make a mobile game now for money. And I wasn't interested in this game last year. I kind of was like, eh, that looks very corny and cringe and I'm staying away from it. But then this year I decided I loathe this game and I wish it never existed at all ever and I hate it. Apart from the fact that it just looks very eh. I'm sorry, but if I put down a free box of kittens and my enemy I'm fighting ran to the box instead of fighting me to cuddle a cute, adorable little tiny kitten that looked a lot like my cat Simon, I'm just saying, and then I blew him up in the mid- Oh man, that's just evil. That's sad. Like, that guy's not bad. He just loves cats, man. I hate that. I hate her for doing it. I feel bad for him because all he wanted to do was cuddle a cat and that was just all very sad for me. I hated it. State of Decay 2 is actually a pretty good zombie game. I had fun playing with my friend. It's not amazing, but uh, this new trailer for it made it look horrible. Fantasy Star Online 2, baby! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just I'm just really happy because so many people I'm sure are freaking out about this and that just makes me happy that people are getting excited for stuff. Crossfire 2 looks okay. I don't know. Only got a cinematic. By this point, I was kind of getting burnt out on the cinematic trailers even though I predicted it and I went in expecting it and I don't blame Microsoft. I, I completely understand the situation they're in and I just really respect and appreciate the fact they are doing their best to make a bunch of new games but I still at this point was feeling the burn on these uh, cinematic trailers. Again, I guess it looked okay. You can't really tell until you see the game, right? Tales of Arise looks freaking cool. This was another one that got leaked recently because it's Bandai Namco again, but the small glimpses of gameplay we got looked absolutely stunning and I'm just excited. Borderlands 3, I guess I'll use this as a chance to say and show you guys something that I've been sitting on for the last few weeks and didn't know what to do with the footage. Uh, Dreamcast guy, Max and I actually went to Gearbox here in Frisco, Texas 
about, again, two, three weeks ago, and we got to play Borderlands 3 for a good hour. It was so much fun. I have like an hour of just raw gameplay, me playing the game at Gearbox, and I do not know what to do with it. I guess you'll see 10 seconds of it now. Uh, Elden Ring? Uh, I mean, really, at this point, I'm just burnt out on the cinematic. I'll be honest, it's... I am excited, and I'm sure it's gonna be great, but I know nothing about it, so moving on. Then we got the new console hype. I wasn't expecting to see or hear anything about the console, honestly. I was hoping, but not expecting, and we did get to hear about it. We didn't get to see it, we got to hear it. Uh, all these people said a lot of stuff. Some of it was pointless. Most of it was just hype. There was one part about being an RPG gamer, which was funny. <laughs> I'm an RPG gamer, and so like, Loading screens are a thing. But here's pretty much that whole thing broken down. This is what I got out of it, okay? So the new console is gonna have 40 times better processing. I mean, all of these words just take with a pinch of salt until we actually have it in our hands. And you know, the whole blast processing thing where you get hyped up for something. But regardless, 40 times, that's, that's insane. Processing power and all of that is like directly what corresponds with, you know, things like load times. So 40 times faster. I mean, that's almost eliminating load times right there. I mean, not it's not really how it works, but they mentioned the frames are insane, like frame rates we've never seen before, and then immediately like 120 FPS. <laughs> I've seen 120 FPS, but still that is perfect. Like that is where, I mean, anything, anything above 60 is just a nicety. As if, if you can keep me at a solid 60, I'm happy. 120 is just, it's the cream of the crop. Like that's just great. If, if every game is running at a steady 120, that is my future of gaming right there. I mean, that alone is great. Four times more powerful than the Xbox One X. The Xbox One X is an, an underpowered machine. Still, even right now, it's a great machine. So four times better than that is four times the excitement from me. Capable of 8K, which while right now it's like, oh, okay, cool. That is needed because in five, six years from now when that console it's still, you know, being sold on the market, you will, will most likely have 8K TV. Like 8K TVs are starting to roll in. And pretty much all of this is possible thanks to the fact that it's an SSD in there now. I think they've like said they built their own SSD or something, whatever, a solid state drive, which is just much faster and better at processing all of this stuff. I'm not a computer guy, but I know SSDs are great. I put one in my computer recently and the damn thing runs about 10 times faster. So yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> it turns out that Halo Infinite is a launch title on the new Xbox Project Scarlet or whatever, and that's not really any surprise. What is a surprise? is we didn't get any gameplay for that game either. Could really have used that. Would have would have been good. Um, I'm guessing reason being they just don't want to show off that system yet. They don't want to show off what it's capable of or anything like that yet until they're ready. So we didn't get a look at Halo. And then that was Microsoft's. They kind of just packed up and went home. It was really random. I didn't know they were done. I was expecting Phil to say one last thing, maybe one last secret announcement, but we got a montage of all the stuff we'd seen so far and then it just shut down. And again, I was very impressed by this entire conference. I think they did a very solid job, like a really great job. And what's really exciting for me in the Microsoft world right now and the Xbox ecosystem is that not really so much what's happening right now. We're not really getting too much right now out of Xbox and Microsoft. Sure, we're getting a bunch of great Game Pass games. We're able to play games on their current system really cheap, but still at the same time, there's not much happening right this second because they kind of screwed up everything after their launch and it was just really quiet. And I feel like for a while there, they were kind of like, do we just give up? Like, are we even making another console? Are we even doing games anymore? Or do we just become a service, people to play games on, kind of like Steam? Like, what are we doing? And it seemed like some point last year, they were like, no, we love games. That's why we're a company. That's why we exist. That's what we've been doing. Why aren't we making games? I feel like Microsoft is finally back and it's gonna take some time to build up that trust to get people playing back on their console again, to take that plunge of buying the system, to buy the games that they're now working on. We're not there yet. They haven't rebuilt everything yet, but they're back and they're trying. And for me as someone that loves Xbox and loves the 360 and just loves games, that is really exciting to see them just doing their best. For the love of gamers on every platform, it's just about the games right now on Xbox. And we're starting to see that and I love it and it's exciting. 
and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> um, that took me way too long to get through all of that. I've talked for like an hour here. I really wanted to keep it short. So now I've got to edit this up real quick. Please remember to hit that notification bell with alerts turned on. That is going to be so important moving forward on the channel and I'll tell you why soon. But please, if you're already subscribed and if you're not, hit flip on that subscribe button. And if you are, then double fine hair flip all over the notification button with alerts turned on. The next couple of days is going to be crazy and it's all a big lead up to Nintendo. I am loving this. Thank you guys and I'll see you soon. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking.